Hey YouTube, we're in a little bit of a different setting today, you can see. Uh, we are in my mom's kitchen today. I'm gonna be making creme brulee for a late Father's Day celebration. That's my dad's favorite dessert. So I've got my ingredients and my equipment set up. Let's go ahead and go over what we need for this recipe. I'll post the recipe in the description below, but I am also gonna make a note right now that the recipe I'm using is for eight servings and I'm only making six creme brulees today. So I'm doing a little bit of math, but I'll go ahead and go over what we need. For six servings, we need three cups of heavy whipping cream, six eggs, egg yolks to be exact. I tried to find one with whole eggs, but because they're custard, we need them to be egg yolks. We're gonna use one vanilla bean. The recipe calls for three quarters cup of sugar plus two tablespoons. So I'm just going to do one tablespoon less of three quarters of a cup. I'm doing three quarters of the recipe. So I'll be using these to measure the sugar. We're gonna need six ramekins and you'll see I have them laid out in a baking dish. We are going to water bath these. So the custard will go into the bowl and then we're gonna add hot water into here after we put these in the oven. I've got a couple of bowls to separate my eggs, a pan to heat my water up, and a pan to cook the cream and the vanilla and the salt. We'll also need a pinch of salt. The first step in making this recipe is to separate our eggs, which for some reason gave me more trouble today than usual. I don't really do this very often, but I feel like I've had better success in the past than I did today. I don't know if it was the age of my eggs. They weren't super old, but they weren't super fresh either. And this one I got really lucky that that one didn't break. So I guess that's one plus. I didn't break any of the yolks. The next step is to heat up our cream. Again, this calls for three cups for this recipe with a pinch of salt, and we'll steep the vanilla in this mixture. Don't boil this mixture, we just want it warm enough to shimmer on top. Once we get the cream and the salt started to heat up, I'm gonna go ahead and slice this vanilla bean open. You want the pulp from inside the vanilla bean, and we're gonna scrape this into our cream mixture. This is where all that flavor is coming from. This takes a little bit of patience and also be really careful not to cut yourself. I used a paring knife for this purpose, but you could use a spoon or whatever you have on hand that you think would make scooping the pulp out much easier. And once we've got as much of the pulp scooped out as we can, we're gonna drop the whole bean in there. The longer you let this steep, the more vanilla flavor you're going to be able to extract from the bean. I let it steep for maybe about five or 10 minutes. Just make sure that it doesn't come to a boil. So I've got the whole vanilla bean in here and the the pulp from the inside of the vanilla bean. We're gonna heat this over medium heat until the surface begins to shimmer. We don't want a rolling boil, we just want a light. We want the cream to heat up and extract all the flavor from the vanilla. What's gonna help this set up is when we add it to the egg yolks. So I will let this heat up so that it's about ready. Once we add the sugar to the eggs, they'll start to set, so I don't want to start that too early. But I'll be right back when the cream is ready to add into the eggs. That is going to be the absolute most important step of this whole process. All right, the cream is just about ready. It's starting to have some movement on the top. I've given it a couple of stirs to make sure all the pulp is broken up and has been knocked loose of the vanilla bean. Before I add that to my egg mixture, I'm gonna go ahead and get these eggs beaten and add my sugar. And because I'm having to do a little bit of math, I'm gonna add two quarters of a cup of sugar leveled off. And then I'm gonna fill this up one more time, but I'm gonna take out one tablespoon from it. I'm gonna get this mixed well. As I mentioned earlier, sugar cooks eggs. Now it's not gonna make it safe from salmonella, but it does start to help it set. So I have to work quickly once I get the sugar added in here. And I really want you to pay attention to this next step because it is absolutely the most important part. If you don't do this properly, you're gonna end up with scrambled eggs instead of creme brulee. So I've got my egg mixture here. This is cold or room temperature. I've got my hot cream over here. I need to take this off of the heat and I need to temper my eggs, which is basically where I add just a little bit of warm liquid to bring the eggs up a little bit warmer so that they gradually heat instead of heating up very quickly. That's how you get scrambled eggs. So I'm gonna grab a ladle and I'm going to very slowly add my cream mixture to my egg mixture. And when I say very slowly, I mean very slowly. This takes some patience. And honestly, this is why this recipe is notorious for being a little bit more on the difficult side. 
it's really not that difficult you just have to have patience I mean there's really not that many ingredients to it the vanilla bean may be a little bit hard to come by or expensive they can be pretty expensive speaking of that if you have a hard time or can't afford a vanilla bean you can use vanilla extract but I would not heat the vanilla extract up in the cream I would add the vanilla extract after you get your cream and your eggs mixed I learned that when making chocolate pudding. It's actually in my baked salmon video. I'll put a link in the description. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and you want to check out some of my videos coming up. I've got a lot planned. And you'll see how this mixture is still nice and smooth. We don't have any clumps and that's exactly what you want. It's still not heated up. I've only done one ladle and you want to be really careful. And we're just going to repeat this process until all the cream is added into the egg mixture. Okay, you can see I've got some bubbles on top of here. That's not a really huge deal. If you want to strain this through a strainer or something to remove the bubbles, you can do that. But I'm going to go ahead and get this measured out into my ramekins. I'll go ahead and try for two-thirds to three-quarters of the way up. If you get a little bit of custard into the baking dish, it's not as big of a deal, but you really want to try to avoid later getting the water into your creme brulee because you do not want any water in here. I'm just going to go ahead and fill them up to the line that's in here. This is another step of the process that really takes some patience just to make sure that you're not making a huge mess and I'm using a ladle that's a pretty good size so really this didn't take me too long but this is not a step that you want to rush. Just like in several of my other baking videos I mentioned that you really want to make sure you get everything evenly filled and this is another prime example of that. If you have some that are underfilled, they're going to be very firm and definitely overcooked maybe even a little bit dry while the ones that are overfilled are going to retain their moisture. Hmm. I need to take some out of another one. This is really important and it's not like cake. This is something that you really want to have the right consistency. That's the most important part. So I'm not going to skip this step. So I've got my ramekins filled. If you've got a toothpick or something, you can try to pop those larger bubbles on top. But like I said earlier, not really a huge deal. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. And I'm going to arrange my creme brulee in my baking dish like I had it before. Be careful not to slosh too much. You want these to be as evenly filled as possible. You saw me kind of evening them out. I took a spoonful of, out of each one and added it to my last ramekin because it was just a little bit underfilled, but you want these to have an even cook time, so make sure to fill them as evenly as you can. I'm gonna go ahead and get these put into the oven, but notice also, I don't know if you can see this without me being dangerous about it, I've got some boiling water over here in this pot. I'm going to add that water to my baking dish very carefully so as not to slosh any water into the custard before I close the oven door. That's going to help water bath these custards and they'll bake at about 300 degrees for about an hour. I'll check them after that. You want them to be firm around the edges but still kind of jiggly on the inside if it's firm all the way across, they're overcooked. So you want them to still have a little bit of jiggle to them. So let me go ahead and get these put into the oven and I'll be back with you after a while. This is another step where you really need to take some care. Make sure that you don't splash any of the water. I removed two of the ramekins and I'm spooning the boiling water into the dish. I decided that was not a big enough ladle. This way you are avoiding as much splash back up into the ramekins as you can avoid. And I'm gonna put the last two ramekins in to make sure I'm not overfilling my water and just adding it to the end there to make sure it's about halfway up the ramekins. And I did decide to go ahead and cover it, which probably slowed down the cook time a little bit but it prevented it from getting too brown on top and now we wait my timer just went off I actually set it for 55 minutes just to check some of the recipes said 50 minutes some said an hour so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out gently making sure I'm not gonna slosh any of that boiling water around and I'm also gonna go ahead and take off the foil they still need some time so I'll give them another five minutes they're probably in there for another seven minutes or so. I think I filled them more than the recipe said, which added some extra cook time. So these are looking pretty close to being done to me. They're still pretty jiggly, but they don't stick to my finger very much. 
I'm gonna let them cool for a few minutes before I take them out of the water, but after that, I'm gonna set them over here on this cooling rack where they will continue to set up. After they're cool for several minutes and the ramekins aren't quite as hot, we're gonna stick these in the fridge for about three hours, or you can go up to two days. And as soon as you're ready to consume it, we're gonna top it with sugar and you can either take a blowtorch to, to it or you can broil it in the oven as close to the broiler as you can get it and we're gonna caramelize the sugar on top. I'll be back in just a little while with you when it's time to toast the sugar. Surprise, I'm back home. Welcome back to my kitchen. <laughs> so the creme brulee, I took two ramekins home with me. I left four with my parents. They used their butane torch to toast the sugar on top. I'm gonna try a different method. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I don't have my own propane torch anymore. I'm not quite sure what happened to it. So, er, butane, not propane. So I have my broiler preheating right now. I'm going to take the ramekins out of the fridge, dab off any moisture that might have accumulated while they were chilling in there, and I'm gonna sprinkle some sugar. I've got some turbinado sugar. You can also use super fine sugar if you've got that. And then I'm gonna broil them as close to the flame as I can get it until the sugar has melted and caramelized on top. Wish me luck on these staying intact as they go into the oven. If you know very much about science at all, you know that putting cold glass into something hot or vice versa is not great. I'm really hoping that this glass doesn't break, but we're gonna see, it's gonna be an experiment. Just making sure there's not any liquid. This is actually pretty dry, so I'm gonna get the sugar out. This step is always a little daunting to me because it's a fine balance between having too much sugar and it taking forever to melt and caramelize and not having enough sugar. I think I got a pretty good coverage this time and it, I think it turned out well in the end. Really the most important thing is to have a nice and even layer of sugar. Here's my attempt at broiling the sugar. It does have a nice crust on the top. I was a little bit worried about overcooking the custard, so while I think you could get a prettier browning if you use the torch, this still got the job done and my ramekins didn't break, so yay. Nice and smooth and creamy on the inside. Overall, the texture of both the custard and the sugar was great, but since I broiled it, it did heat that custard back up, which was a little bit different to me. I'm used to it being cold. Here's a picture of mom and dad's creme brulee that they used the butane torch on. Mom's comment was that they had wished that they had added a little bit of extra sugar just to get a more even spread, but you can see that nice caramelization that they got on top, and that's really nice looking. I think they only ate two that night and I found out the next day or maybe a couple days later that my Mimi had one for lunch and said it was the best she'd ever had. So that was really great to hear. And that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I really encourage you not to be intimidated when you're trying new recipes or when the method seems a little bit more complicated than you're used to. Really, I would highly recommend trying this recipe. It's delicious and you'll have a new appreciation for creme brulee from restaurants as well. Actually, my parents have been to a couple of restaurants and ordered the creme brulee since I started making it for them, and they say it's not the same at all. They'd rather have homemade. If you do try this recipe out, please let me know how it goes in the comment section. I love to hear from you guys, and if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up so I know to make more of this type of content. If you're new around here, please don't forget to subscribe and you'll get notified when I have some new material coming out that'll be coming out very soon, and I hope to see you guys around next time. Bye, guys.